Writing copy that generates tons of results and revenue is super easy, right? Not really, and that's why you need a really good copywriting process in place that helps speed up your workflow, produce better copy, and just generate a lot better results from any campaign. I don't know about you, but when I was new to copywriting, I would wing projects all the time. I was really good when it came to the strategies and whatnot, but I didn't have a clear process in place I could follow every single time. And now over eight plus years of copywriting and having written for a lot of big brands, I've really nailed a good process I can use every single time that not only speeds up my workflow and how fast I deliver for a client, but also just makes a lot better results. So stick around in today's video because I'll be showing you my personal copywriting process. And this is always gonna begin with research. I think it's one of the most underrated parts of copywriting. And often if you struggle to write copy, it's normally because you haven't done enough research. Because if you do your research, you're gonna understand the product very deeply, the customer that you're communicating to, you're gonna understand the client and their business, their content and branding guidelines, and how they like to do ads and present themselves to the world. So that's why the first thing I always ask for with a client is buyer personas, and content guidelines. This is gonna save you so much time and energy because you're gonna know exactly who you're targeting, their demographics, their feelings, their beliefs, their pain points, all of that. And you're also gonna understand how the client wants to communicate their business and content and brand guidelines tell you exactly what words not to use, what words to use, tone of voice, personality, things like that. Outside of that, when you're doing your own secondary kind of research and you're on the internet, I recommend that you go read reviews, case studies, and testimonials. So for example, if you're working with a client, go and study their reviews and testimonials because it's literally the customer saying how they found the business, what they liked, what they didn't like, and it really allows you to get into their head, which is obviously what we're trying to do with copywriting. Industry reports and market reports can be amazing as well. And no, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on IBIS reports. You can also just Google some kind of keyword followed by market report, industry report, and you'll literally get dozens if not hundreds of free reports that you can analyze. And why you wanna look at these is that they include trends, opportunities, consumer behavior. And if you're new to a certain market or industry, it really just helps you get a nice bird's eye view uh, with some depth and actually real good analysis in it too. So it's not just an overview. It actually does include a lot of deep stuff about any kind of niche. Other things to look for when you're in the research phase is social media conversations, forum conversations. You can ask for information about the product from the client and just try to find any kind of resources on that industry, client and product. And then once you've done all that, it's time to actually ask yourself some questions. I like actually mapping this out in a spreadsheet, but you can do a Google Doc, whatever you want. And we're gonna begin by asking questions about the product. Number one is what are the features and benefits? You've heard me talk about this tons. So features are factual pieces of information. Benefits are what that actually does for the customer. Secondly, what's the value proposition? How's it different from anything on the market? What problem does it solve? Because ultimately a consumer is buying something to solve some kind of pain point, whether it's emotional, financial, health-wise. So make sure you acknowledge that. It'll be a huge part of your copywriting and how you position the product as a solution. How much does it cost? What's the price? Is there some kind of refund policy, warranties, money back guarantee? Are there pricing plans? What's the turnaround time? When you order it, do you get it instantly as a digital product? When you buy it, does it take a week to ship to you? Are there different shipping options? And how much does it cost to maintain? Once you buy it, is there some kind of monthly fee or subscription? Do we have to pay more money to actually upkeep it? And then after you've answered these questions, it's time to ask questions about the audience. So number one, who are they? What are their demographics in terms of age, income, location? And while that stuff matters, what's more important about the audience is their psychographics, their feelings, their beliefs, their desires, wants, needs, their pain points and struggles. If you have a buyer persona on hand, a lot of these questions are already answered for you. So you can just reference that. It will really speed up the process. But secondly, why do they even need the product? What kind of problem are they trying to solve? What are they trying to get out of it? in their life and maybe think about the emotions and the experiences that they're aiming to get. Also, what questions would they have about the product? Going back to those first sets of questions about the product itself I covered, they're probably gonna ask the same things. How much does it cost? What's the refund policy? How does it work? Is there some kind of upkeep? Think about what the customer would ask. And then when you have those mapped out, you can answer them ahead of time in the copy. And it's also why we wanna ask, what would they object to? Because customers are naturally skeptical. They wanna protect themselves and their money. So you wanna make sure that you have a general idea of what they would object to. An FAQ page is really good for this, or maybe if you have a sales page, a sales letter, having some kind of FAQ system or section in there will help overcome a lot of objections. But think what they would object to in terms of credibility, proof, science, things like that, and then make sure you can overcome that in the copy. After all the research is done and we have these things mapped out, we're on to step two, which is actually writing the first draft. 
And what I recommend is always begin with a nice outline with your bullets. This is essentially a skeleton of the project you're writing, and it'll be different for everything you write. If you're writing a big long sales letter, then of course you're gonna have a bigger outline. If you're writing a short Facebook ad, it'll be quite short. You need to tailor it to every project. And the bullets are literally just bullet points of everything you wanna cover. So this is where you would take all that information uh, you have about the product and the audience into the outline. You know, what are the product features, the benefits, the value proposition. You might write some headline ideas, sub headline ideas. You'll map out where you wanna put the offer, the call to action, show pricing and testimonials. And it can also just look as simple as this. It doesn't have to be super complicated. And remember, we just want a general outline of the project. So when we begin writing, it just makes everything way easier. And then we wanna spend some time writing headline ideas. Now I've mentioned before, uh, my experience with headline writing is that you wanna write some ideas and come up with the foundations of your headlines, but near the end of the project, go back and rewrite them because you have so much more knowledge and information. You can typically write the best headlines later on. But even besides that, when you do write some headlines to block off and section off different areas of the copy, some things I'd recommend is one, using urgency. So explaining to the reader that if they don't take action soon, they'll miss out on something. Classic copywriting strategy works every time. Secondly, you can create a sense of curiosity or mystery. So don't give everything away in the headline. Leave something out, start at the high point of a story, and then have them read the rest of the copy to figure it out. Thirdly, you can make it benefit driven. So tell them exactly what they're gonna get out of the product or reading the copy. And then it's just a really bold, direct statement and incentive to read it. And then of course, under your headline, you have the sub headline, and you can pretty much use the exact same strategies you would use with a typical headline. But some other things you can do are elaborating more on the product features and benefits, elaborating on a value proposition and what makes it better than anything on the market, talking about the guarantee, if there's some kind of money back guarantee, satisfaction guarantee, or even just using a call to action to tell them to learn more about XYZ in the sales letter. And now we can finally move on to the body. And normally writing body copy is the hardest part. After you've mapped everything out, it's actually just time now to write the bulk of the copy. But if you actually just take it step by step, section by section, it becomes a lot easier. So start off by writing the introduction, move maybe into the features and benefits. You then might go into the value proposition, storytelling, and so on. Once again, it'll change based on the individual campaign, but the general idea is that you wanna approach it step by step, and then you won't get super overwhelmed. And that every section of the copy has its own goal. If you're talking about the value proposition, write sentences or paragraphs, depending on the length, just on that, really hone in on it. If you're talking about the guarantee, go all in on that. If you're talking about the offer, then explain it as best as possible. I also want you to make sure that when you're writing copy, you're using a lot of social proof and credibility. Once again, consumers are naturally a bit skeptical. They wanna spend their money on something good. They wanna trust you. So first way, testimonials. Use the feedback, uh, whether it's written or video from previous customers. About 93% of people look for reviews and buying something. So make sure that during the copywriting process, you're sourcing testimonials. And that plays into groupthink because we naturally look to other people to make better decisions and save time when making decisions. Now, I'd also recommend that you use quotes from experts, whether they're doctors, people in your field, people from your company, someone just kind of back up what you're talking about. And you can also use stats and data. Just go to Google, type in a keyword, followed by study, stats, data, and you'll find tons of things you can reference. And this just helps back up any claims you make and provide a little bit more credibility. And then we wanna form the offer. So the offer isn't exactly what you're selling, it's what it can actually do for the customer. And there's a few things that compose the offer. One, it is what you're selling, the product, the service, whatever it might be. Secondly, is what it actually does. So that's kind of like the benefit and the emotional experiential benefits of the product or service. And then thirdly, the pricing and how to get it. Take this sales letter from Agora Financial, one of the best copywriters of all time. And you can see near the end of the sales letter, they neatly recap what you get out of this membership, including the features, the benefits, they tell you how to order, the pricing. They just neatly summarize it within a very short amount of space. And once again, that is the offer. Normally it goes typically closer to the end of a sales page, a sales letter, depending on what you're writing. And then we have to write the call to action. Now, of course, you're gonna have little calls to action sprinkled in throughout the copy, but at the end, you wanna have one main call to action, and this will drive the majority 
of response. It should be tailored to the exact offer you have, the exact audience, and really the mission of the campaign. So here's actually another sales letter from Agora Financial. I love them, I really look up to them. So I wanna use them as an example again. And you can see at the end of this sales letter, they have a really bold call to action in blue contrasting text that says become a member. It's pretty much impossible to miss. And actually just above that in the paragraph, it actually says become a member and it explains kind of the process of clicking that button and then filling out the form and what they get out of that. So you can do the same thing by making the call to action contrasting with colors. You can put it in a big button, a graphical element, just make it hard to miss. After this, we need some kind of guarantee and we wanna make the transaction risk-free and just a no-brainer for the customer. So remember this is done with a money-back guarantee. It could be 30 days, 60 days, um, it'll depend on the client or if it's your own business, what you're comfortable with providing. You can also do satisfaction guarantees. Warranties are great as well, especially if you're selling something physical, some kind of piece of technology where it's gonna be used and it'll have some wear and tear. And then if it does break down or have problems, they can get another one to replace that. And when consumers buy something and they spend their money, normally they're looking for some kind of warranty or guarantee as a way to avoid risk. Then step three is now cleaning up that mess of the copy you have because if you're writing really fast, which I recommend to use that creative side of the brain, then you're probably gonna have a lot of errors and problems with the copy. But that's okay because that's what the editing and proofreading stage is for, which is what we're on right now. So reread the first draft and look for things like spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes. Look for a logical flow. Do the points you talk about actually make a logical sense? and how they're ordered. I think about what the customer would be asking or thinking about and then order the copy in that way. One thing I love from Dan Kennedy is his saying, does it advance the sale? So what you can do is when you're editing the copy, always think, does this advance the sale? And if it doesn't, you can remove it. It's probably a bit of fluff. Now, editing by hand can probably take hours. It's, you know, that's probably gonna give you enough headaches. So I always recommend using something like Hemingway app, Grammarly, some kind of grammar editing tool that will use AI or at least some kind of automation to just speed this process up. For example, if you want to use Hemingway app, completely free website, just paste in the copy. It'll tell you everything you need to fix from passive speak and misspelling words and more. It also gives you a reading level and some metrics like that, which is pretty cool, but it'll really help you out in the editing and proofreading process. So to recap all of that, in general, what the copywriting process for me normally looks like is I'm going to begin with research. I want to research the audience, the product, the client. I'm gonna look at reviews and testimonials, market reports, the buyer persona from the client, content guidelines, and take a lot of notes on these so I can then go into the first phase, which is actually creating an outline and bullets. And I'm just gonna map out all the major points, the sub points, the strategies, ideas, and concepts that I'd like to cover in this campaign. And I'll normally share this with the client as well so they can kind of see that general direction I'm heading in. And then I can move on to writing the first draft. I like to write really fast and not worry about editing and typos because it allows me to use the right side of the brain, which is more creative. And that's where a lot of cool ideas and inspiration come from. But once that is done, I move on to editing and proofreading. I love using something like Grammarly or Hemingway app to really speed up the process. I'll also put links to some articles I've written on copy editing and proofreading. You can get my step-by-step -step list there. But that's kind of the general process I like to take. So I'd love to hear what you do when you're taking on a copywriting project. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.